so my dear friends good evening to everyone we'll be going to start with two day session there was a break of two days in between uh but it's okay we'll continue with the, our series of organon and we have to learn the sixth edition by heart earlier we have finished few important things regarding the introduction of the organon we have learned what is homeopathy what is organon what is logic what is inductive reasoning what is deductive reasoning all things we have discussed in length and thereafter we have started with the book and the first page it has been written the order is appear that's also we have discussed in length <coughs> thereafter we have discussed about the translator scripts written by william bory and where he has explained the differentiation between the fifth and sixth edition of organ of life all the differences which are which are there it has been thoroughly mentioned by him over there now we have to turn towards the another important aspect of the book and that aspect is nothing but the introduction written by james cross to the book and this is very 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 important one question is always asked in your exams that um explain in detail how the homeopathy is a scientific system of medicine and that explanation in thera mentioned by james cross in this introduction and that's why we have to learn every aspect of james cross introduction which teaches us a lot of thing which gives us different different ideas of about the uh, organ of medicine so we'll start with james cross introduction let us open your book and just start with the introduction written by james cross what he says introduction to dr borick's translation of sixth edition of hanemonian organ so this is the introduction written to the only for the aphorisms by james cross and that is also for the translation part the excellence of dujon's translation into english of the fifth german edition of hanemann's organon is thoroughly maintained throughout this english translation of the sixth german edition by dr william bory to whom the medical profession is under double debt for rescuing this last authentic work of hanemann from possible loss and for putting it into good clear unparaphrased english so what he is saying that dr duja who has translated the introduction for the fifth edition which has been kept as it is by william bory in this book and it has not changed even hanemann have not changed the introduction he has written he has kept it as it is and we, because of bory we have this book the sixth edition because it was two times it was in uh, in the process of losing the sixth edition and that's why he says we are in double debt to the dr william bory twice this manuscript of hanemann was in danger of being lost once during the siege of paris in the franco prussian war of 1870-71 and once in military overrunning of west phalia during the world war 1914-1918 dr bory was the main instrument for procuring this last medical manuscript of hanemann for the medical work so this is too important that two times this was in danger and it, there might be a chance that we would have not got the sixth edition it is only because william bory who has preserved this and because of whom we have this sixth edition with us so it was during the world war as well as during the franco prussian war at two two times it was in danger of losing this sixth edition and this was the original edition written by hanemann with hanemann's own hand which was there with the borik it was unique borik has that original manuscript from the hanemann and that that is the thing because of which the james cross says we we are in double debt to the william borik what he says further everything that hanemann ever wrote is of historic medical interest for not withstanding all attempts of ignorant prejudice time serving so called medical historians to detract from hanemann this is his historic importance for medicine 
Hahnemann remains one of the four epochal figures in the history of practice of medicine. What he says? There were lot of obstacles in the journey of Hahnemann. There were lot of distractors to the Hahnemann. When Hahnemann was coming out with new thoughts, no one was ready to accept them. And even there was lot of obstacle, lot of trouble happened to Hahnemann. Still, he remains one of the important figure, epochal figures in the history of medicine. There were four persons whose names are always there in the history of medicine. So he labels over there, which are four. Number one, he said, Hippocrates, the observer, right over there, number one, because this is the MCQ for the student who are the four epochal figures in the history of medicine. First is Hippocrates. The second is Galen, third is Paracelsus, and fourth is Hanover. And this is MCQ, one should know. And with, with their, um, what, whatever the terminologies which he has used, that, uh, that is also important. Hippocrates, the observer, introduced the art of clinical observation as the necessary basis for pathologic diagnosis. He was the first person who came out with the clinical examination of the patient. Hippocrates is known to the world because he came out with this thought, yes, there is need to clinically examine the patient. He was the first person who has shown a clinical reference of the patient. Till that period, everything was in vain. Everything, everyone was coming with their own thoughts and different, different thoughts were there. He was the first one who said it is too important to examine the patient. Second important personality, second one was the Galen, number two, right over there. Galen, the disseminator. Disseminator means who has spread whatever the Hippocrates have done. And that is nothing but the disseminator. Spread with powerful authority the teachings of Hippocrates over the medical world. And Galen was the first important person who has spread the work done by Hippocrates. Because of which the clinical medicine gets established. The third person who came out with the different examinations, who started examining clinically as well as pathologically, and he was the Paracelsus. So third one, what he says, Paracelsus, the assailer. Assailer because he was the first one who started with something new, that there is need to clinically examine the urine, clinically examine the blood, different, different methods Paracelsus has started. So Paracelsus, the asseller, introduced chemical as well as physical analysis in the practice of medicine. So he has started with different era. And he started examining not only the patient, but their different secretions, different parts, different cellular. So cellular pathology also started over there. Virko was one of them. And then last one, the fourth one, Hahnemann, the experimenter. The word which was very specifically used by James Cross, experimenter. So Hahnemann, the experimenter, discovered the symptomatic source of both pathologic and therapeutic diagnosis and thereby made the practice of medicine scientific. He was the first one who started with the very important aspect. He started understanding patient symptomatology. The patient symptomatology both way the subjective as well as objective. Both aspects he started understanding the patient. So whatever may be the patient says, that is very important for Hahnemann. Whatever may be the patient's, um, patient's signs are there, those were also important for the Hahnemann. And that's why he started with the first, the pathologic diagnosis or pathologic understanding of the patient. At the same time, therapeutic diagnosis and there was one thing which he has started there is a correlation between the therapeutic diagnosis and pathologic diagnosis with the help of law of similar first time in the history of medicine the experimentation started first time in the history of medicine experimented started on healthy human beings the proving of the drug started on the healthy human beings and that's why we we get both subjective as well as objective data and both were, both were essential in order to come to a right conclusion, in order to come to a con perfect medicine. So he, he has made the medicine, the system, absolutely scientific. There, one law was established by Hahnemann after six years of work. 
1790 he got that induction that there might be a law but he worked 6 years to reach to the perfectness and then after a deduction of 6 years experimentation he explained it in 1796 the law of similar so hanevan made the medicine more scientific and these were the four epochal figures in the history of medicine so this is mcq for the students who are attending over there which are the four epochal figures in the history of medicine next paragraph is most important for every aspect here james cross explains the scientificity of the homeopathy he explains the importance of diagnosis over there and he has he has explained the importance of diagnosis from homeopathic point of view also both the aspects he has tried to explain and both are necessary diagnosis is important in order to understand what, what the patient is suffering from and that that paragraph is devoted with the importance of diagnosis so we'll read sentence by sentence and every sentence has a meaning in the scientific practice of medicine we examine every patient suffering from any topic plastic tropic and toxic diseases to which man is subject in order to obtain all signs and symptoms of the disease all his disease effects for pathologic and therapeutic diagnosis as well as for the prognosis see this is what important what what how do how do we examine the patient how do we look towards the patient with four varieties of presentation first presentation is always topic topic means which are expressing externally which were expressing externally on the skin on the external aspects of the human being the plastic which is in the form of some exude which is always in the form of some discharge third is tropic tropic means concerned with the nourishment which is expressing through the nourishment and toxic diseases very important to which man is subject that is toxic toxic means toxicological manifestation and these were four varieties with patient, with which patient approaches to you so whenever patient comes to you you have to first look for it you have to understand that patient from what he is suffering whether he is expressing any signs and symptoms in the form at the external level or he is having some problem at the level of discharges whether he is having the problem at the level of tropic changes that is with the nourishment or last the whether he is suffering from any toxic effects or toxic problem then he says all is all his disease effects for pathologic and therapeutic diagnosis and followed by prognosis what is pathologic diagnosis when a patient comes to us we we understand that patient with a pathological nosological diagnosis it is necessary in order to understand from what the patient is suffering for for example i will let you know if the patient comes to you with a recurrent headache since last 3 4 year he has gone to all allopath everyone have done every investigation they have labeled that you have a migraine but 3 years back when it started it it used to happen once in 2 3 months then after a year the progress was there it was increasing nearly about once in a week then in last year it was increased daily and now it is continuous type of headache it is right sided headache it is throbbing type of headache he was not able to look towards the light there is throbbing of carotids at the same time and he wants to just lie down and hold his head over there this is what with which he has presented now question arises what is the medicine everyone knows that medicine is simple because he has given all symptomatology throbbing headache with carot throbbing carotids aggravated by looking at light aggravated by noise wants to lie down completely with calm and quiet way this is simple belladonna but belladonna will not going to do anything in this case because you have not diagnosed for what you are prescribing for unless and until you know the diagnosis you cannot reach to the medicine because you will not understand what is the disease process is going on 
if this headache is there since last three, four years and increasing day by day, and now patient is in worse state, it is necessary why he is having so much of severe headache. And if you ask to go for a scan and you find it out, there is a tumor over there, whether your belladonna has the capacity to dissolve that tumor, whether that belladonna will cover that patient, it is not at all. And this is the reason what the need to diagnose that case is very important. Once you understand it is a, it is a tumor, then you will think what may be the, your thought. Then you will consider this is not acute disease which you have to treat with the belladon. Here it is the remedy which you have to select on the basis of miasmatic diagnosis. It is based upon the past history. It is based upon the family history, it is based upon the personal history, everything you have to take into consideration along with miasmatic background, along with the constitution of the person. And then you have to reach to the right remedy in that case. So diagnosis is very, very important in order to understand the disease process. And once you understand disease process, then you can reach to the therapeutic diagnosis. Then you will reach to the right remedy. Then you will think it is not belladonna will going to do over, which the remedy which you have to find it out, either it is from psychosyphilitic myism or cancer myism, which you have to think for, because you have no, done the diagnosis. And for that purpose, he explains over there, for disease effects for pathologic, second therapeutic diagnosis, and last important thing, in order to know the prognosis. Now you know that person is having the tumor, Day before yesterday, there was a case of the glioma. It is a brain tumor. And it is, a, it is not only brain tumor, it is a brain tumor, it is a metastasis specifically. It is a metastasis which was there. And that, if the patient was not knowing the diagnosis, even patient's relatives were not knowing the diagnosis, and they were continuously giving <coughs> the painkiller to because she was giving, getting up and on headache with the neck pains and she was taking lot of lot of painkiller and once she got a convulsion then they ran to the doctors then she was investigated and then found that she is having the glioma over there and then further investigations were done and two days back I have started treatment for her. Now you have to think that here the diagnosis plays the role because you have to find it out remedy that reaches to that level that has the capacity to dissolve that tumor that has the capacity to stop that metastasis and it depends only on diagnosis without diagnosis you cannot think in such a broad manner and that's why diagnosis is very important even in homeopathy you know not for the purpose of therapeutic diagnosis but for the purpose of understanding the disease. <coughs> Next sentence, what he says is very important. We examine by observing the pathologic and comparing it with the physiologic for the diagnostic interpretation, prognostic predication, and therapeutic application. Very simple way he explains. What is the need? We examine by observing pathologic with and comparing it with the physiologic for the diagnostic interpretation. I will let you know one example. You tell me if the patient was brought to you, a seven, eight months child with involuntary urination or bed wetting, and that child is there in front of you, and they were asking for the remedy, and they say that child is very obstinate, sleeps on abdomen, <coughs> always clings to the mother, shrieking too much. So what you are going to give? Are you going to give any medicine? Are you think about it? What you are going to do? Anything? You can explain in chat. You, you can explain. What, what do you think? Kya karenge aap? What, what you are going to do? Are you going to do anything or not? We must give some medicine. Okay. Any, any other thought, any other idea? Basically, if you know that child is of six to seven months or eight months old, 
it is involuntary urination is the physiological and if it is physiological there is no need to treat that child this is too important so first we know what is physiological and then we have to compare it with the pathological then and then we reach to the right diagnosis and that's why we examine by observing the pathology and comparing it with physiology for the diagnostic interpretation whenever we used to examine any patient we used to ask any patient to go for investigation we compare it with the normal value if we ask the patient to go for cbc complete blood count we compare hb what is the normal range of hemoglobin in males it is around 12 to 14 15 16 but if it is 9 or 10 we consider it there is a anemia if there is total wbc count is there it has been written there is 16000 count is there we compare it with normal count normal count is 6 to 10 or 4 to 10000 so we have to compare with physiological and we have to understand the pathological so this is the method with which we analyze the patient this is the method with which we understand the patient properly so we examine by observing pathology and comparing with wheat with the physiology for diagnostic interpretation prognostic prediction if we know the patient is having the cancer we we immediately think about prognosis in fact in modern science the prognosis is totally based upon the diagnosis they labels the years of the life remaining with the patients and they labels this this much is the life available with the patient with the help of the in diagnosis that is called as prognostic prediction so second important thing we we may think that in which complications patient may land patient may land into any complication before um, going into complication we can understand with the help of diagnosis if the patient is having typhoid we must know that typhoid is the intestinal disease where the there are intestinal patches pears patches and ulcer is there patient may enter into the perforation as a complication so, so these are the things which we have to understand so this is what he is explaining over there that prognostic prediction is dependent upon the diagnosis and third the therapeutic application is also dependent but for modern science the therapeutic application depends upon the diagnosis homeopathy the therapeutic diagnosis never depends upon the the pathology diagnosis we have to individualize each and every case and that's why in the qualities of homeopathic physician whenever hanuman wrote in the third aphorism he explains he should have knowledge of disease comma indication that is the word which he has utilized in the bracket knowledge of disease is nothing but the diagnosis and knowledge of disease comma indication indication means how that disease is indicating showing individuality of that individual that we have to find it out homeopathic prescription depends upon that individuality homeopathic prescription is based upon that and this is what he wants to explain over there we diagnose by classifying the pathologic condition with similar pathologic condition this is the way with which we diagnose if a patient comes to you with pain in right iliac fossa and patient patient is there in front of you what are the possibilities which comes in your mind which are the different possibilities you can think of there might be appendicitis you can think of there might be right urethral calculi the you if she is a female you can think of there it might be a ovarian pain sometimes it might be a some tipilitis inflammation of the cecum so there are varieties and what what you are doing you are comparing one pathologic condition with the similar pathologic condition with which you reach to the right diagnosis and that is what is called as we first do a differential diagnosis so we diagnose by classifying the pathologic condition with similar pathologic condition we diagnose the anatomic seat See, very important we diagnose the anatomic seat that is the organs and the parts of the organs affected this is too important so whenever patient comes with a typical specific pain with which he enters and he sir i am having very severe pain over here in right hypochondriac region 
you examine and you find that it is the right hypochondriac region. What do you do? You go for finding it out what may be the possible diagnosis. You immediately think about the anatomical seats, which organs are there. The first organ which comes in your mind is liver. The second organ which comes in your mind is gallbladder. So there might be a different, different possibilities. There might be a pain over there in the, like a cholecystitis, the inflammation of gallbladder, which can produce a stitching type of pain. There might be a gallbladder calculi, which might be causing the pain. There might be a biliary calculi, which might be causing the pain. It depends upon anatomical seat and that anatomical seat gives you importance to find it out what may be the exact reason with which the patient is coming to you. And you have to act accordingly. Unless you diagnose, you cannot act. If a patient in acute agony comes to you with right hypochondriac pain and he is just tossing in agony, then you have to think that patient might have a biliary calculi which is producing very severe type of pain. And for that purpose, we diagnose the anatomic seat, very important thing which he explains over there. Then he explains, we diagnose the physiologic process, the what that is, the course of inflammation, exudation, degenerations, necrosis, atrophies, hypertrophies, aplagias, and hyperplagia. <coughs> he has explained all the pathological processes, the changing from physiology to the pathology. And first important thing in the pathology at the general pathology is inflammation. So we have to find it out the course of inflammation. What whether it is acute inflammation, whether it is subacute inflammation, whether it is chronic inflammation, then you have to reach with the next, whether there is exudation. What is an exudation? What is exudation? Exudation is nothing but the expulsion of plasma proteins, plasma from the blood vessels to the site where the antigen is there. When it comes out the blood vessel and when it reaches at the level of antigen, it is a protein-rich fluid which is an exudate. And why proteins are there? Because that proteins, in those proteins are nothing but the globulins. And globulins are the first protective antibodies to fight against any antigen. That is the first thing with which a patient fights. And that's why exudation is one of the important process in the immune system. <coughs> degenerations. What is degeneration? Degeneration of the cell, degeneration of the tissue, degenerations of the organs. This is a process, wear and tear phenomenon. So fatty degeneration of the heart, fatty degeneration of the liver, where fat goes inside the cell and damaging that cell. Generally, say fat never remains inside the cell. It remains in the interstitial spaces. But once it enters inside the cell, it damages, it degenerates the cells. And that's why it is called as a fatty degeneration. Same is true with the amyloid degeneration. So varieties of degenerations, we have to find it out. The next is necrosis. Necrosis is the death of cell. So we have to find it out. Is there any necrosis in the patient? Then we have to find it out, is there any atrophy like liver cirrhosis? Sometimes it might be atrophy of the mm, testes, it might be atrophy of the ovaries. So then hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is nothing but the increase in the size of the cell, increasing the size of the organ ultimately. Hypertrophy. Then aplasias. Aplasia means absence of development of the cells is aplasia. So one marrow, whenever never develops the blood or it never develops the cell production, it is a plastic anemia. That is what is developed, a plasia. And lastly, the hyperplasia, where number of cells gets increased. So these are different processes which you have to find it out in order to reach to the right diagnosis. If you don't know whether it is atrophy, whether it is hypertrophy, whether it is hyperplasia, and still you prescribe on the symptom. Sometimes you might win, but sometimes you may lose because you don't know the diagnosis. This happens many times. If you, you are not aware about what from what the patient is suffering from, 
you cannot think logically sometimes there is a need to utilize your weapons along with the help of the surgery along with the help of the even modern science also and for that purpose it is so ne- so much necessary to reach to the right diagnosis right diagnosis always 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 helps to reach to the in uh, to reach or to uh, in the process of recovery of the patient and that for that purpose physician can understand that in a proper manner i think there is a there is one more paragraph we diagnose the etiologic factors the how that is developmental traumatic infectious antecedents of predisposition and excitation this sentence requires a lot of time it requires nearly about 20 to 15 minutes to understand and this is too important when we deal with the homeopathic aspect whatever up till now we have learned is more from modern point of view but it is not only for the modern point of view it is even when you do homeopathic practice all those all all these thing is necessary and james cross says this is what hanuman have told hanuman never told just go for the symptomatology he knows you must have the knowledge of disease and that knowledge of disease is nothing but the diagnosing the disease so that you can reach to the right prediction that is what is called as a prognosis so we have to learn every sentence from this james cross introduction which gives you a lot of answers also for your questions in your exam so my suggestion to all of you though there are many students from the colleges you must go with this reach each read each and every sentence from this james cross introduction and wherever i will going to tell you this is important from exam point of view prepare that question and give the reference whenever you are writing the answers of the questions always give the re- reference if the question is asked then you give the reference in the introduction written by james cross in in his introduction james cross says details about importance of diagnosis if you write this sentence at the start it makes the difference that indicates you have read each and everything and that's why whenever you are writing the answers these types of references always help to you so my dear friends this 30 minutes period is very important for your life you here you will learn many 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 things and ask your all the friends and uh, from what uh, from whichever college they belong to they can join this activity and learn the organ in this manner so thank you for many many students who have joined from different area thanks to them and we'll again meet tomorrow at the same time with the same only thing is that just join before so that we cannot waste because we have very less time with us we have only 40 minutes in fact 35 minutes only and that's why it is necessary to get joined early so that we can get that 35 minutes total period for our lecture our discussion and whatever your your queries are there Do, be there with the queries so that we can have a live chat with all of you okay so thank you for today's session and we'll meet tomorrow at the same time thanks a lot